Hello and welcome to this video lesson. In this video lesson, we will be looking at parallel vectors and collinear points. When it comes to vectors, we can say that vectors are parallel when they have the same direction. So it doesn't really matter what their magnitude is, but as long as they have the same direction, that means they must be parallel. Let's look at a few vectors here. So here we got a vector A, we got a vector which is twice the length, so 2a, and we got a vector which is approximately half a length, so about a half times vector a. Note that even if the direction was not pointing in the same way, but it was pointing the negative way, so for example negative 2a, the two lines will still be parallel they would just have different magnitude and different di diff opposite directions. So to put this in a definition, we can say that two non-zero vectors are par parallel if and only if one is a scalar multiplication of the other. So if we put this in a vector form, we can say that if vector A is equal to a scalar value multiplied by vector b, then vector a and vector b are parallel. Also note that the k value, which is the scalar value, could be both positive or negative. If it's positive, that means the two vectors are pointing in the same direction, and if k is negative, that means that the vectors are pointing in the opposite direction. We can also write this as magnitude of vector a is equal to the scalar value or the absolute value of the scalar value multiplied by the magnitude of vector b. Okay, now let's look at an example. So we're given two vectors. We're given vector a, which has x coordinate of 1, y coordinate of 2, and z coordinate of t and vector b which has x coordinate of s, y coordinate of 4, and z coordinate of 6. And we're told that if vector a and vector b are parallel, then find the missing values t and s. Now, to find these two values, we're just going to write the concept that we just learned. So we can either write vector b is equal to a scalar value k times vector a, or that vector a is equal to k times vector b. Now, looking at the two vectors, I can see that vector b has slightly larger values. So I'm going to write vector b, which is 5, 4, 6, is equal to some scalar value multiplied by vector a, which is 1, 2, t. And I can kind of look at the y coordinate here, and I can write that 2 times k is equal to the value of 4, and based on that I can find the value of k, which is equivalent to 2. Once I have the k value, I can just use that to find s and t. So I know that s is equal to 1 multiplied by k, and I know what the k, I know that the value of k is 2, and therefore s is equal to 2. And I know that 6 is equal to k multiplied by t. And since I have the k value as 2, I know that 6 is equal to 2 times t. And when I solve for t, I get that t is equivalent to 3. Now, note that I could have started the question by saying that vector a is equal to k times b, vector b, and I still would have gotten the same values for s and t, but my k value would have been different, and in this case my k value would be a fraction, and it would be 1 over 2. So I could have written it in both forms, and it would still hold true, and the s and the t value would be the exact same numbers. All right, let's look at the unit vector now. So what we're gonna look at is how we can use vector a to come up with another vector which is parallel to vector a, but has a different magnitude. 
So let's draw a few vectors. This is vector A. It's got an x coordinate of 4 and y coordinate of 0. And these are a few vectors that are parallel and actually going in the same direction as well. Okay, based on our current knowledge, we know that parallel vectors have the same direction. If we find a vector which is in the same direction but has different or equal magnitude, then we know that this vector is parallel to vector A. Now, to find a vector which has the same direction as vector A, however it has different magnitude, we're going to introduce what's called a unit vector. We have seen unit vectors before. Unit vectors, some of them ones that are the base unit vectors in the x, y, and z directions, vector i, vector j, and vector k. However, now we're going to introduce a unit vector which has a magnitude of 1. However, it can be in any direction. And to do this, we're going to take vector A and divide it by its magnitude. So if vector A has a magnitude of 7, for example, if we divide it by its magnitude, then this vector will no longer have that magnitude. It will have magnitude of 1, but it will keep the same direction. So let's look at the example that we have above. So if our vector A has direction 4 and 0, so 4 in the x direction and 0 in the y direction, then its unit vector, or a vector that is in the direction of A but has a magnitude of 1, uh, to find that, first we have to find the magnitude of A. So that's 4 squared plus 0 squared square rooted and that will give us 4. So the unit vector in direction of A will be 1 over 4 which is the magnitude multiplied by vector A and therefore it is 1 over 4 times 4 is 0. And if we multiply everything out so we get 1 over 4 times 4 which is 1 and we get the 0. Uh, 0 times 1 over 4 is just 0. So if we want vector b to have a certain dimension, let's say we want it to have dimension k, where k is any number, we can write it as vector b is equal to k, which, are, which is our scalar value, multiplied by unit vector a. So unit vector a will have the direction that we want, but it will have magnitude of 1, and if we multiply that magnitude of 1 by scalar factor k, we will get whatever k value, whatever magnitude that we desire. Now, the last example was very intuitive because vector a only went in the x direction and its magnitude of was 4 and therefore its unit vector would have a magnitude of 1 in the x direction and 0 in the y direction. So that was very intuitive. So let's see another example where vector A is no longer only in one direction. In this example, vector A is equal to 2i minus j. That means that it goes in the x direction by a magnitude of 2, and it goes in the, z in the y direction by a magnitude of negative 1. So what we want to do is find unit vector in direction of A, a vector of length 3 in direction of A, and vectors of length 3 which are parallel to vector A. I like to start off these questions with drawing a diagram, and in a two-dimensional vector is a little bit easy to draw out, so let's do this one. So this vector starts off at a point and it goes in a magnitude of 2 in the x direction, magnitude of 1 in the z direction, but in the negative direction, so it goes down instead of up. And to find the magnitude of A, I just have to use Pythagorean theorem, so I will get square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared, which is square root of 5. So to find the unit vector A, what I have to do is I have to take the vector, and then I have to divided by its magnitude. 
So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to write it as a 1 over magnitude of a, which is square root of 5, multiplied by vector a. Since the scalar vector 1 over a, square root of 5 is being multiplied by both of the components, 2 and negative 1, I can write it as 2 over square root of 5 times i, vector i, minus 1 over square root of 5 multiplied by vector j. And if I want to change the format, I can write it as the x and y component, so 2 over square root of 5 in the x direction and negative 1 over square root of 5 in the y direction. Now for part b of the question, I know that the vector that I'm looking for has a length of 3, so all I have to do is multiply 3 by the unit vector. And what that's going to do is that it's going to increase the x and the y component by a factor of 3. And therefore, I will get 3 times 2, which is 6, over square root of 5 times vector i minus 3 times 1, which is 3, over square root of 5 times vector j. Now, the next question says, find vectors of length 3 that are parallel to vector a. So if we draw it out, we can see that this is how vector a looks like. And a line that's parallel to it could be could have the same direction or it could have the opposite direction. So if it has an opposite direction, then that means that we can write 6 over square root of 5 times vector i minus 3 over square root of 5 times vector j. Or we can multiply it by a scalar value of negative 1 to get the negative vector, which one that goes in the opposite direction, to get negative 6 over square root of 5 times vector i plus 3 over square root of 5 times vector j. So we've done a one-dimensional question, we've done a two-dimensional, let's focus on a three-dimensional question. So now we want to find a vector of length two, vectors of length two, which are parallel to vector w, which has x, y, and z components of two, negative one, and negative two. So what we do is we want scalar factor of two multiplied by the unit vector of w, which is 1 over magnitude of vector w multiplied by vector w. So we get 2 divided by the magnitude, which is square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared, multiplied by vector w, which is 2, negative 1, negative 2. And if we multiply everything together, and if we simplify, we will get our final vector as 4 over 3, negative 2 over 3, and negative 4 over 3. Now, if they are parallel, they could have opposite directions. So what we can do is we know one of our answers for sure is 4 over 3, negative 2 over 3, and negative 4 over 3. But we can also multiply this by its negative to give us the vector which has the opposite direction but the same magnitude and is still parallel to vector w and that would be negative 4 over 3, 2 over 3, and 4 over 3. And this is the same component values but in the negative direction. Now, the next thing we'll look at is collinear points. And points are collinear if they lie on the same straight line. So if we take a straight line and take, vec take points A, B, and C, we would know that points A, B, and C are collinear if vector A, B is equal to some scalar value K multiplied by vector B, C. And this should make sense because for these points to be in the same line, the two vectors have to be parallel because they lie in the same line and those vectors are definitely parallel. And the other thing that you will notice is that they share one of the points. And in this case, they both share points B. Note that this is not the only condition that will work in this example that we have. 
In this example, we can also write that vector AC is equal to K times vector CB. Or we can write that vector BA is equal to K multiplied by vector AC and so on as long as one of the points is shared between the two and that the two vectors are parallel that means they are collinear points okay let's do an example now so in this example we're going to give you three points and we're going to ask you to prove that these points are collinear so point a here has x y and z coordinate of negative 2 1 and 4 B has 4, 3, 0, and C has coordinates 19, 8, and negative 10. So as we discussed previously, the points will be collinear if vector AB is equal to some scalar value K multiplied by vector BC. So what we'll do is we will find vector AB by subtracting the x, y, and z coordinates of points A from points B, and we will get 6, 2, negative 4. We'll do the same thing to find vector B, C, and we will find its x, y, and z coordinates by subtracting components of B from C, and we will get vector which has components of 15, 5, and negative 10 for x, y, and z. What, we'll do, what we will do next is find a k value or a scalar value that can be multiplied by the components of vector AB to give us the components of vector BC. And if we look, we can just divide 15 by 6 and, or 5 over 2 or negative 10 by negative 4 and in all cases we get 5 over 2. So if we multiply 5 over 2 by 6, we will get 15. If we multiply 5 over 2 by 2, we will get 5, and 5 over 2 times negative 4, we get negative 10, meaning that vector BC is equal to 5 over 2 multiplied by vector AB. And therefore, we can say that vector BC and vector AB are parallel. We also know that point B is shared or is common between the two vectors, and since these are the two conditions for points to be collinear, therefore points A, B, and C are collinear.